when can I get this taken care of? You call Jada right now and we'll get you in there ASAP. No, I don't want nobody to know. Everything will be confidential. Well, we're to episode nine of The Shy. If you've been following my videos, you know I predicted what is going to be my number one and number two WTF moments from episode nine. We saw it coming. Some of y'all didn't want to believe it, and some of y'all are going to rejoice. So let's dive on into what were my top four WTF moments from episode nine. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to this channel. Please be sure to turn on those notifications so when I drop videos, you guys get them. Follow me on Instagram when you have questions. Check me out tomorrow night, Monday Live, when we'll do a full explanation of The Shy Episode 9, P-Valley, and Lovecraft Country. All those shows came on today. We'll have Larry and the acclaimed award-winning YouTube channel, Pay or Wait, Sharonda will join us live as well. You don't want to miss it. My number four WTF moment, Jake stealing documents from Duda's house. Candy caught him, and she helped him with the code. Earlier in the, in the episode, we saw someone from the 69th Street gang try to plant drugs in Jake's brother's truck. And then that gave Jake a plan. And my wife looked at me and was like, Jake got a plan? <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, Jake got a plan. Jake been underneath a politician's butt. He's learning. Turns out that plan was to possibly get some kind of a document out of that safe in which Candy gave him the code to get as if she didn't care because this whole episode, she was trying to be a good campaign manager and Duda got mad with her and told her to go home. So whatever Jake got out of there, I am going to assume it somehow or another ties Duda to him being the crime boss for the 63rd Street mob. And they took that information and gave it to Camille's campaign manager. So ladies and gentlemen, we might be seeing Duda go to jail, Camille becoming the mayor, and Candy jumping ship and joining Camille in her campaign. Post me your comments on what you think is going to happen with that situation. My number three WTF moment, Emmett proposing to Tiff and the whole story surrounding him and this restaurant and who the hell is supposed to believe that Sonny was just going to go down without a fight? We know his brother's a thug. We know Sonny used to have a little thug in him. Are we supposed to believe Sonny just went to the retirement community and just said, ah, oh, well, hands up, don't shoot? I'm not buying that for a minute, ladies and gentlemen. He's probably going to pop up. But getting back to Emmett, he has a tense moment with Dom in which they both basically told each other they still like each other. They still want to screw now, even though Dom claimed she can just be, you can just get the draws and keep it moving, it was something about the way she looked at Emmett when he proposed. Now, did y'all see all his slew of baby mamas when he proposed to Tiff? Took her a few minutes to say yes, but she said yes anyway. And then they bring in his dad at the grand opening who starts hitting on Dom. And I'm kind of wondering if that's supposed to be writing, putting pressure back on Emmett to kind of say, you know what, I like Dom more than what I think because she was taking an interest in the dad and the dad um, really don't seem like he's all that interested in the proposal to Tiff. He doesn't seem like he likes Tiff all that high. He went as far as to tell the girl the ring was bought out of the pawn shop. I was like, damn, dude, help your son out, man. If you're going to talk about his ring, why don't you help buy the brother a ring? And in any event... Emmett's mama basically knows that Dom and Emmett screwed. He came clean to her, and she's kind of worried. You know, even though he's telling her it's just a screw thing, she's not really buying it. And I kind of believe for Emmett it could be a screw thing, but the way Dom was looking at him at that grand opening when he proposed, the way she's looking at him walking into the building, the way she's making little sneaky comments, I just don't think that she's really done with him in that manner. And this is going to pose a big problem. You're about to get married. You're going to be entangled with a woman who's supposed to be your business partner. This is not going to end well because Dominique is already showing she's conniving. And she was able to just hang around Tiff as if nothing is going on. I mean, smooth operator. So 
You guys leave me comments on when you think this thing is going to explode. It won't be this season. It's definitely going to be next season. But this is a storyline that is going to probably drag out for a whole entire season. My number two WTF moment, as predicted on this YouTube channel, Keisha is pregnant by the man she killed that abducted her and abused her. Damn. Mm, 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 mm. Some of y'all was trying to say I'm crazy. Why would the writers do it? Someone even said they would have found out she was pregnant at the hospital. Y'all know it takes like 14 days for a pregnancy test to come back. STD tests can be done a little quicker than that. And now we know she's pregnant. The parents are pushing her to get an abortion, which is when we had the discussion on my channel, we said that it was going to set up um, moral questions. It was going to set up long-term questions. And the moral question has already been answered. They want the girl to have an abortion. Keisha has said she wants to do that. But as they went deeper into that story, the mom catches Keisha on the computer looking at what happens as you go through the terms of birth. And maybe Keisha might decide to keep the baby, which is going to probably most likely anchor her to Chicago. And we're going to have a running narrative. And we, she doesn't even know that Emmett just went down there and foolishly proposed to Tiff. So that's going to come into the story. And if she does decide to have the baby, ladies and gentlemen, oh my goodness, it's going to be a long story drawn out with that, that you can tie Emmett into it. And you can tie the fact that she might not go to college into it. Or they could take the story and go in a completely different direction. Have her just fight it out. Have the baby. Still go to school using her mom and Dre to help her raise the baby and make this a good story. They could go either way with this. Let me know what you think is going to happen. So you guys have already got to know my number one WTF moment. <laughs> That's for Kogi, motherfucker. Somebody, please. Ronnie. Ronnie. No. Ronnie getting shot in the head before he can get out of Chicago. We foreshadowed this one as well. And I know a lot of you all are happy about that because some of you all thought that Ronnie's character had no value. But keep in mind, the whole reason Ronnie was in this heat was because someone killed his kid first. Did y'all not forget about that? Has that been overlooked? Long story short, Ronnie was doing that victory lap. And whenever stories give someone a victory lap, there's usually a big plot that happens to him. So we kind of seen it coming that he might would die. And he got the money from the church. Um, <clears throat> Tracy was kind of back in his life. He had another opportunity to go see his grandchild, sacrifice some money for the grandchild, was going to leave, go be with his friends, work. He threw his ashes for his grandma in the river. Um, everything was looking on the up and up. And then the same guy that was in the church, that was kicked out of the church, was there as they was leaving the restaurant, Smokey's, and shot him in the head. My wife seen him lurking in the corner. She was like, Tracy didn't see him coming. And then furthermore, for as much as I've hyped up Tracy and we talked about how we liked her character, her acting was a little lackluster at the moment of the shooting. Um, I never heard anyone say, oh, call the police. Um, no one went after that cat. No one done anything. And she just seemed, it felt like she didn't draw on an inner pain in the moment when Ronnie fell. Maybe she wasn't as close to him as she once was. But throughout this episode, they played it as though maybe some of those feelings she had was coming back up. She even went as far as to say, you don't have to leave Chicago to become a new man. So guys, leave me all your comments. Those were the biggest moments. And we're to our very last episode of The Shy Season 3 next Sunday. Be sure to check me, Larry, and Sharonda from Paraway live tomorrow night at 9 p.m., We'll deep dive into all these TV series and give you guys a good review. Take some of your questions online. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe. Get yourself that life game. Follow me on Instagram, people. Share my videos. And if you have questions, comments, and concerns, TV shows, theories, fan theories, I try to get those on the channel. Shoot them to me on Instagram, DM. And until the next Sex is Hell video, I'll see you.